So, Shanquilla, Shanquilla, Shanquilla. It's been a while since I think we've I've given an update on this channel, official update, like what's going on, where we at in the case, blah, 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 that good stuff. And so we actually do have an update. Um, and we also have the family. They, you know, they've come out and spoke some more about Shanquilla. Actually, we get to see a clip of Shanquilla that, you know, at some touch, you know, softens her up. You know, it shows her as a person in her human skin. So sit back and let me update you. You know, I'm going to give you the very facts of it all. Okay. And it, it could get boring, but y'all stick with me. All right. Stick with me. I'm making it very palatable. Okay. So on January 9th, we celebrated Shanquilla's birthday. We would have celebrated her birthday. Unfortunately, she's not here with us. So why is it taking so long? Shanquilla Robinson's friend outraged over lack of progress in finding justice. And so it's been almost three months since Shanquilla's tragic death, and her family is still looking for answers and an arrest. Her mother remembered the 25th birthday she did get to spend with her daughter. She would tell you what she wanted for her birthday, and that's what we go and buy. I wanted to include that because I thought that was cute. Sound like some shit I would do. Um, the F now, here's where I'm gonna the update comes, okay? So the FBI and authorities in Mexico have both launched investigations, okay? Mexico said that an arrest warrant had been issued and femicide charges filed against an unnamed female suspect. However, since then, there's been no confirmation of any of her travel partners being in custody or even being processed for extradition from the United States. So this is where we take sort of the biggest turn, the biggest, okay, where are we going now in the case? So I'm just how I did before. I put us well ahead because now everybody talking about, I'm putting us another step ahead. Okay. So we're going to jump another step ahead of actually where the FBI is actually at in the process. Okay. So what's going on now? So the FBI has officially turned this case over. So, so there's offices within the FBI, like People be saying, like, you know, the FBI is doing it. Well, it ain't just the FBI. It's the it's an office inside the FBI. So the specific office responsible for handling this case is the Office of International Affairs. Now, what the Office of International Affairs specifically deals with is returning fugitives to face justice, transfer sentences, sentenced persons to serve their sentences in their home countries. And here's key word obtains essential evidence for criminal investigations and prosecutions worldwide by working with domestic partners and foreign counterparts to facilitate the cooperation necessary to enforce the law. And so what we're finding is that we're in that process right now where it's all about evidence gathering. But before you can do evidence gathering, we have to line up in what they're calling MLATs. Now, this is something new. You know, we talked about extradition treaty. Well, this is before you can even get to the extradition treaty. You have to go through these MLATs. So what's an MLAT? And so how do I secure a criminal? Uh, a, uh, international, sorry, this is where they are. International evidence gathering through a vast network of international relationships and treaties. The OIA obtains evidence located abroad that is essential for successful U.S. prosecutions, seeks enforcement of U.S. asset forfeiture, forfeiture orders abroad, and arranges return of assets to the United States. They obtain evidence in the United States on behalf of foreign criminal investigators, thereby enhancing our foreign partners' ability to interdict criminal threats abroad before they reach our shores. So how do you do that? So how does Mexico secure assistance in a criminal case? So this Office of International Affairs in the Criminal Division of the U.S. Department of Justice supports the investigation and prosecution of criminal offenses. They assist state and federal prosecutors and law enforcement authorities to secure information and evidence from foreign countries. Now, the Office of International Affairs is the central authority in the United States. Under here it go. Mutual Legal Assistance Treaties. And so this is where we are. We're at the point where we are operating under the Mutual Legal Assistance Treaty because Mexico needs the U.S. to obtain evidence to support their claims. And remember, the claim originally was 
femicide. So I dug up the actual MLT for Mexico, which was signed on December 9th of 1987. And this breaks down where we are. Okay. So part of this is the United States of America designates a central authority, right? And so they shall consult regularly with each other in order to secure the most effective implementation of this treaty and to anticipate and resolve problems that may arise in its application. For those purposes, the coordinating authority shall meet at the request of either one of them and at a time and place to be mutually agreed. This lets us know, A, that both Mexico authorities and the Office, Office of International Affairs at the FBI have been meeting. They have been having meetings about this regularly, and they have been having discussions about whether of uh, uh, surrounding how they're going to move forward with this case. Whether they got past that discussion or not, this is where they have that discussion. It's um this is where it materialized. And so another segment of this is before refusing the execution of any recuse request, the authority shall determine whether there are conditions whose satisfaction would make possible the rendering of assistance. Meaning, if the U.S. was to say, no, we can't help you, Mexico, they would have to tell them why and give them the opportunity to, refix, to fix that. Remember, I told you they wanted to come pursue this as a charge of femicide. I really believe the U.S. is only looking at this as a homicide. So if you want us to help you, we really need you to redo the case. And so it goes on to say the coordinating authority of the requested party shall promptly inform that of the requesting party of the reason for denying the execution request. This one, the requesting party shall not use any information or evidence obtained under this treaty for purposes other than those stated in the request without the prior consent of the coordinating authority. Now, here's where it's funny, where we're saying why FBI hasn't put out any information, but the Mexico authorities have leaked some stuff. This is why it's okay for Mexico authorities to leak some stuff. In a, the use of any information or evidence obtained under this treaty, which has been made public in the requesting state, Mexico, resulting from the investigation or proceeding described in the request, shall not be subject to the restriction. So it's okay for them to release information to the public in Mexico, but it's not okay for us to release any information. And so I wondered why were they releasing some stuff, but we are not confirming it. Well, it's because part of this treaty and them seeking legal assistance from the United States, they have to operate under these under this treaty. And because they're the requester to the United States, they're allowed that liberty to leak out information. Similar to if the FBI was requesting stuff from Mexico, they could release out stuff too because it would allow the public to be informed. It'll put out um, information. It's the basis of the claim. But Mexico, under the treaty, would not be allowed to release what Mexico, what they're talking about or what they're releasing because it's not their case. Again, like the U.S., it's not the FBI's, it's not the U.S. case, it's Mexico's. They're, the U.S. is now helping on behalf. So I wanted to show that because this is how we are and this is where we are we're we're literally smack in this treaty now this treaty is about 15 pages long i went through all 15 pages so i can get a clear idea and it literally walks you through what goes on gathering of evidence gathering testimony from um the, a us citizen on behalf of the requester and you have to go to, through courts but here's the thing you all this is the freaking thing am i at that one yet here we go. So here's where we are. So why wouldn't the biggest question has been, why haven't Dejanay been arrested? Why haven't the other ones been arrested? And I've often wondered and I often said to you all is that if they find a good defense attorney, they're going to have a problem on their hands because the way this has been handled. OK, and so there's a clause in the treaty that speaks specifically to a U.S. citizen coming back to U.S and claiming immunity, but you can't get me, I'm on, I'm on U.S. soil. And so I said, I wonder if Dejanay claimed it, claim, is going to prepare to claim immunity. And so here's what happened if that happens. So in this treaty, it says any claim of immunity, Im immunity, I'm sorry, incapacity or privilege under the laws of the requesting state shall be resolved 
exclusively by the competent authorities of the requesting party. So now if Dejeuner requests to be immune from this, it has to be done in the states, in a state court. That's something we'll never know. We won't hear about that because it's not a, a U.S. lit case, but it'll be prosecuted here for her to claim immunity. And if that's the case, we still would have to wait for them to work through this mutual gr agreement, this treaty. They call them M -M -M -Lats, M -M -L -A -T, MLAT, this mutual agreement. So we find ourselves here. It also says that accordingly, the testimony shall be taken in the requested state and forwarded to the requested party where such claims will be resolved by its competent authorities. So once we have acknowledged that you've claimed immunity, we're then going to send that to the, the state, Mexico, and then they have to then make their judgment from that. And they have yet to claim they heard anything about immunity or not. But if we do hear anything about immunity, Trust me, if Mexico comes out and says she claims immunity, it's because it's already been walked through the U.S. courts. OK, so I'm trying to go far ahead. Should she claim immunity? This treaty speaks to that. Um, what else does it speak to? So we find ourselves here. The FBI investigation into the death of Shankwella Robinson is ongoing. We know this is a difficult time for our family and the community. The FBI is working with the Department of Justice to conduct a thorough and exhaustive investigation. And this is the only statement they've released recently. The only statement the FBI has said. So now after walking through the treaty, you understand why that's the only statement they've said. And now you understand why Mexico comes out here and talk about the case. And I'm, I'm walking you through the legal process because that's the only way we'll understand what is sort of going on. Um, now, you know, we had statement from the family um which i'll read i want you all to i want you all to get into this clip because i want you all to see shankwilla as a person rest in peace shankwilla we still saying your name i'm still digging i'm trying to figure out where they at in the case girl i'm i, I i'm hearing and if they claim immunity i now know what happens you know so i'm trying to do the work you know rest in peace to you and this video of watching you sit there and talk about you know grade point average and stuff i was just like you are just a regular woman i don't understand why why won't y'all all be over here i'm not understanding if i get rid of them let me see all right and shout out to the crew can y'all hit that like button for me though for me though and shout out to the black man on the case baby three months ago the world started to say her name Shenquilla Robinson, since her October 29th death in Cabo, Mexico, here at WBTV, we've shared her story. From a conversation with her parents. They said that her neck had been broke. To the rallies in Charlotte pushing for answers. <laughs> and being the only station asking someone who was on the Mexico trip the question the world has been wondering. What happened to Shenquilla Robinson? And tonight, another side of this story from someone she called a classmate, a teammate, and above all else, a friend. At a 2.0 or higher GPA. A cheerful smile. Teachers, if you have any... An infectious laugh. <laughs> she lived. She lived. <laughs> that, Kayla Mitchell says, was Shenquilla Robinson. She was just full of um, energy, just full of love. This video made public for the first time. Robinson and Mitchell doing what they love at West Charlotte High School. Talk about you and Shaquilla's relationship. When, when did y'all first meet? So we first met our freshman year at West Charlotte. Um, we started in the IV program. Um, and we instantly connected through our love in fashion. Um, we love to dress up. Um, we put our finest on every day. Class of 2015, teammates on the Lions cheerleading squad. A memory that just sticks out, I don't know why, but um, it was her birthday. And um, I, I got her something as simple as a hot chocolate from Dunkin' Donuts. And you would think I would have brought her the most extravagant gift ever. She was just so happy. She recorded on her Snapchat. Like, it was a real moment for her. Recalling those moments brings a smile, which is why Mitchell says hearing of Robinson's death 
shocked her. I just couldn't believe someone would be capable of doing something like this, and not only to her, like, it was just crazy because I was actually, you know, watching her story, like, seeing that she's enjoying her time. So it's just like, how did it just go left? She was so young. She had so much more life to live. Like, we were planning to work together. Robinson arrived in Cabo, Mexico on October the 28th. A day later, she was found dead. She was on a trip with friends. An autopsy report shared by her family stated she died from a cracked spine. On November the 18th, the FBI started an investigation. The next day, Robinson was laid to rest in Charlotte. November the 24th, we learned Mexican authorities issued an arrest warrant, calling Robinson's death a, quote, femicide. Are there any questions you have? What, what's going on? What's the progress? What's the emotion? Like, what's the timeline? That's my question. Like, it's been months now. I mean, you can't run away from justice. God is a just God. So whatever you do, when people are not around, God sees it. And that's the ultimate. Like, you have to go through him. In a recent news conference, Mexican prosecutor Daniel De La Rosa Anaya reiterated a request has been made for extradition for the, quote, direct aggressor. He also says they did ask U.S. authorities to interview those on the trip. As far as the FBI's independent investigation, in a statement, the agency says, quote, the FBI investigation into the death of Senquilla Robinson is ongoing. We know this is a difficult time for her family and the community. The FBI is working with the Department of Justice to conduct a thorough and exhaustive investigation. What would you want the world to know about Shankula Robinson? That she was just so full of life. She loved experiences, living big, just enjoying and making the most of it. And I feel like that's a lesson that could be valuable to all of us is just to enjoy our lives. So that's where we have it and it's funny i'm sitting here listening to her as she say you know what's going on what's in motion why is it why is it taking so long and i'm like girl they in this treaty you know so that's where we are crew i wanted to share the family statement um statements from the family of shankola robinson on behalf of the robinson and the long family thank you all for the outpouring of support in my sister's untimely demise three months ago unfortunately no one has been arrested and the investigation of this case is still ongoing please continue so, to support and stand with us in solidarity in this journey and fight for justice for shanquilla i am so blessed and grateful for you all to do this for the city of charlotte north carolina and not letting the people who is responsible for her life just think they can do what they did and not answer to what happened in their presence. Once again, thank you for caring about Shanquilla Robinson. You uh, listen, it's my pleasure. It's our pleasure. We're going to definitely continue to say her name. Um, rest in peace, Shanquilla Robinson. And so remember the, the mutual legal assistance treaty um, handled by the office of the international affairs in the FBI is responsible for managing, investigating, and looking at this case. You can literally go to the website of FBI and type in the Office of International Affairs, and they have a phone number down there, a local number too. You can call right up. I say, oh, wow, and an email address. So I think if we start learning to redirect our attention to the right offices in the right areas, we'll probably get a better response. They might not be able to come out and tell us everything, but maybe we might get that press conference we need. But until now, it is stuck up in a lot of investigating, a lot of treaty negotiating, a lot of policies and legalities. The biggest thing here is I really think the Mexico authorities fucked up by coming out so soon and the State Department confirming so soon that this was a case of femicide. Because once you have a, a, a an attorney an extradition attorney working on behalf of Dejeuner or any of them, knowing what we've known walking through this case, you automatically know they're going to claim immunity. They're going to claim, they're going to put everything out there because you know they're not going to be able to easily be prosecuted under no femicide. Well, they're going to easily say, well, this was not no a direct act of aggression, Your Honor. This is not the same thing. They're charging me with something that we don't even honor in our own United States laws which is one big thing of the United States treaties. 
you cannot put excessive burden on our citizens more than ours. That's why everybody say, if you're going to try them, try them in the United States courts. They're already tough. Mexico, try them in the United States. They're already tough. But you want to try them there, and then your laws become tougher than ours. If they're paired apples to apples, it's not the same. So when you look at the United States law system, what femicide law is the same as um, homicide? There's no apples to apples. You know, our homicide is a homicide, male and female. They call femicide direct aggression towards females just because you're a woman. That's not what happened here. That is not what happened here. And if they investigate, that is not what happened here. So we'll be here for the long run, you all. And shout out to the crew. That was our local news for the day. Oh, baby. We got through that. Shit, we got through that. Okay.